What is up, everybody? We are back here at King Films for another betting locks and game predictions video. This time it's week 16, and we're coming off a decently successful week in terms of game predictions. Um, went 11 and 5, a uh, few upsets to go through the Raiders losing, the Niners losing, and then the Vikings losing. And then massive favorites losing, and the Rams and the Steelers both were at least. 14-point uh, favorites at game time, and ended up losing outright. Big surprises this week in the NFL, but we did do pretty well in the other games, uh, going 11-5, which is about uh, our average for the overall total in terms of wins and losses uh, in the game predictions. But then, in terms of betting locks, I have to apologize. This was the worst week of betting locks this entire season. Uh, we only had one other week where we didn't have a win, we went 0-2-1, this time we went 0-3-1, and, and a couple of these deserve to cover um, in the Eagles and the Chiefs, but the Steelers and the Rams were just pitiful, so the Eagles, we had a plus 6.5, and, and they definitely deserved to cover in this game. Uh, they played with the Cardinals the entire time. Uh, it was definitely going to be a one-possession game, you knew that the entire second half, but it ended up being 7 and a half point off from the cover. A critical thing to note here is that the Eagles were without their holder and their punter, so Zach Gertz, their tight end, had to hold the kicks, and that contributed to uh, Jake Elliott missing a crucial PAT that would have made it six points, so we would have covered. That's how close these margins are. Then the Rams, as I already mentioned, this was a terrible best bet, and really, the Jets gave us every indication to bet against them. I mean... The universal rule this year has been fade the Jets at all costs. Uh, lost 43 last week at the Seahawks. And the Seahawks basically pulled Russell Wilson in the middle of the third quarter. And they came out to play. They really wanted to avoid 0-16. And the cover was out the window in the second quarter when the Jets went up by 13 points, eventually going up 17 and then holding on to it in the second half. Their pressure made Jared Goff not play well at all. Sam Darnold was excellent against a very good Rams defense. So all credit to the Jets there. And then one we definitely deserve the cover, uh, the Chiefs minus three. And it was actually Chiefs minus 2.5 at game time. So if you had that, uh, you would have been good to go and gotten the win. But for us at Chiefs minus three, it just didn't end up covering. Uh, it was a pretty bad beat, but at least we got the push out of it. Uh, Chiefs were up by multiple possessions basically the entire game. And then the Chiefs come back, uh, I think, two touchdown drives in the fourth quarter. They really were in no position to win the game. The Chiefs did everything I said they would. Drew Brees was not great in the first half, but they still end up making it a three-point game in the end. And it's a push there. And then the Steelers at minus 12. This was another terrible bet. Uh, I thought the Steelers would right the ship. They needed to do so, uh, knowing that the magic number is only one in the AFC North to clinch it over the Browns. And they just didn't do that. Uh, ben Roethlisberger had a terrible game. Steelers defense uh, didn't play excellent as I thought they would against Ryan Finley. Ryan Finley actually had a decent game. Gio Bernard was great at the running back spot. And then the Steelers just can't move the ball on offense. So not only do they not cover the 12-point spread, they don't even win the game. So as I mentioned, we go 0-3-1 on the betting locks. Really not too good. We have to flip the script this week. And I've got five best bets cooked up, so hopefully we can get above 500 uh, in this next week. And then the game predictions, a solid 11-5, pushing us to 150-69-1 on the year. Not many people have better than that. I'd say that's pretty impressive. Uh, but the betting locks, we finally had it over a 500 this season, and then we get knocked up like that. So definitely need a bounce back week here. So now to our NFL game predictions, and we are starting here on Friday, Christmas Day, Vikings at Saints. And I've got to go with the Saints here. Um, I know they've lost two straight, but they need to bounce back against the Vikings uh, at home. This is obviously the venue in which they lost to the Vikings heartbreaker last year at overtime. In the playoffs, I think they get it back, and then the Vikings, I think, have just quit. Their defense is absolutely abysmal the last two weeks. Uh, Tom Brady, two weeks ago, missed so many throws, and the, the Bucks still put up 26 points. And then Mitch Trubisky and the Bears put up, what, I think at least 30 points on this defense. So if they want any chance to win, 
Dalvin Cook and the Vikings offense have to dominate time of possession, and they're just going to basically have to score on every single drive, hoping that they can get a few stops on D against Drew Brees and Saints offense, which wasn't impeccable last week. So I have the Saints winning there because the Vikings would basically have to play a perfect game on offense to win. Then on Saturday, we have the Bucks at the Lions, and obviously a lot of uncertainty with the Lions organization. Their interim head coach, Daryl Bevel, could be out this game, so I don't know who they have. Regardless, give me the Bucks. Um, I think with this lack of uh, tough competition coming down the stretch, I think they'll, they would win out after the bye week, and they're just going to roll the Lions here. They got themselves into a bit of a hard-fought game last week against the Falcons, going down by 17, but as everyone knew, they would come back. And they did. So give me the Bucks here against a depleted Lions squad who is just trying to tank for a draft pick at the end of the day. Next game, we have the Cardinals hosting the 49ers. And the 49ers, this feels like a home game for them uh, because they do play their home games at State Farm Stadium at this point in the season. Uh, give me the Cardinals in this one, though. I just feel great about their prospects on offense. I mean, Kyler Murray and the Cardinals played really well against a very good uh, Eagles defense. And the Niners are notorious. Even last season when they had that great defense, they were not good against the mobile quarterback. Kyler Murray is just simply their kryptonite. When they were at full strength earlier this year, the Cardinals got this seemingly upset win. But now when the Niners are even more depleted, uh, it doesn't feel like an upset. The Cardinals need this for their playoff chances. And the Niners, they're just hoping that they can get the best possible draft pick. Uh, I think they're going with C.J. Beathard in this one, who I think is a slight improvement over Nick Mullins, but the offense is still going to be lethargic. I think the Cardinals win big. Next game on Saturday Night Football, and this one is big for AFC wildcard implications, and give me the Dolphins to eliminate the Raiders here. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was really high on the Raiders' chances, but just like last year, this team collapsed in December. And last year, where they went 6-3, and three, Lost five straight to go six and eight, basically eliminated themselves there. And this year they went six and three, and they're seven and seven now, but their only win was a blown game by the Jets. Really should have lost that, so it should be six and eight. But regardless, uh, I don't know if they're going to rush Derek Carr back, but uh, that doesn't seem like a smart decision, him being their franchise quarterback, and he's just going to be a sitting duck back there against a very talented Dolphins defensive front. I think. Whoever it is, Marcus Mariota or Derek Carr is going to get clamped against this Dolphins front. And then I think Tua is just going to have enough to beat this Raiders defense. And the Raiders defense obviously being terrible. And then we get to the Sunday action. A great game here. Colts and the Steelers. And the Steelers are in free fall. Colts playing solid football at the moment. Give me the Colts in this one. Um, Jonathan Taylor really coming into his own as the Colts. Uh, lead running back and Phillip Rivers you see when he doesn't make mistakes this team can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone in the NFL they can dominate time of possession and that defense can stop anyone uh, you've seen in the second half in overtime when they clamped down on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers and now against the Steelers offense which really looked lethargic against the Bengals give me the Colts in this one next game we have the Falcons and the Chiefs and the Chiefs, the last six weeks, the last six games, they have not uh, won by more than a touchdown. But regardless, they have still won all the games. Uh, give me the Chiefs here. I think they're a little asleep at the wheel. I think they may have turned it on a little bit more. But the Steelers collapsed and the one seed just fell into their hands. So they don't even have to do much. Patrick Mahomes, he's in the MVP conversation but I feel like he could be doing a little bit more. I just feel that this defense really it can clamp down teams in the fourth quarter, and they could win by multiple possessions, but they just don't. So I think this could be closer than a lot of people think, considering that the Falcons have been playing great football under Raheem Morris, very inspired. Matt Ryan looking very good last week in the first half, but when it's all said and done, you have to take the Chiefs. Next game, we have the Bears at the Jags. I think this one is pretty simple. Vegas seems pretty high on a Jaguars potential upset chance, but no way. The Bears are playing great offense uh, with David Montgomery and Mitch Trubisky is making it work with Matt Nagy. They need this one for their playoff chances, and they're facing the Jags, who, with their one win and winning the strength of 
victory tiebreaker over the Jets would be in line for the number one pick in Trevor Lawrence. So absolutely no incentive to win this game. I think the Bears win big. Next game, we have the Texans and the Bengals. And give me the Texans here. I know everyone's high on the Bengals. This is a short week game against a Texans team who has looked good within their division games. They have fumbled inside the five-yard line twice against the Colts and potential chances to win. They can play uh, to a high caliber uh, when Deshaun Watson plays well. Obviously, you observe what happened against the Bears when their defense just got dominated by the run game, but I don't think the Bengals can do that. I think Deshaun Watson has a day against this atrocious Bengals defense, and I think the Bengals get put in their place by the Texans, who have looked great against uh, terrible competition this year, so give me Houston there. Next game, we have the Ravens at the Giants. And this one is big for some teams who are on the outside looking in in the playoffs, but give me the Ravens here. I think they're rolling with Lamar Jackson. They know they can't drop this game, and they are the superior team in this one. Lamar Jackson and that Ravens offense is coming to their own. They're honestly looking a little bit like that last year team, uh, running, the f- running the football to perfection. And finally, last week, Dez got in the end zone for the first time in three years. I think they keep this train moving against a Giants defense, which is pretty good, but the Giants offense with Colt McCoy or Daniel Jones, they are just lethargic, as is seen the last two weeks, so give me the Ravens big there. Next game, we have the Browns at the Jets, and this one's pretty simple. I think that Jets win was an aberration, and I think the Browns know what they're getting into. They are still in it for the AFC North Championship, so give me the Browns to win this game. I think Baker Mayfield's looking very good. Obviously, you heard the news. Quinnen Williams is out for this one, and he was really instrumental in their victory against the Rams. He absolutely decimated that Rams offensive line, got pressure in Jared Goff's face. So give me the Cleveland Browns here. I think they'll dominate time of possession with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Baker won't have to do much through the air, but what he does do will be effective against an atrocious Jets defense at this point without Quinnen Williams. Next game, we have the Panthers at the football team. And give me the football team's slight upset here, but I just do not like the way that this football team is trending. I think they'll get Alex Smith and Gibson back, but, I mean, coming off of injuries, I don't know how the how productive they will be in this game. And Panthers' defense, which has been much maligned the entire season, is actually coming to play at this point in the season. I mean, they let up three points to Aaron Rodgers and the Packers in the second half. Uh, coming off of a slightly longer week, give me the Panthers in the upset. I think Teddy Bridgewater is playing for his job next season. Uh, he is not guaranteed this spot at, at this point next season. So I think he pl- comes to play and he outduels Alex Smith or whoever the football team has back there to start a quarterback. Next game, we have the Chargers at the Broncos. And give me the Chargers to win this one. Uh, I think Justin Herbert has a great game again in this one. And if you remember, I think uh, earlier in the season, these two teams played at mile high and the Chargers blew a big lead. I think they're going to get out to a big lead in this one. And I think they are just going to put it to the Broncos in the second half. Not going to let that lead slip. And the Broncos, even though they got embarrassed and there could be a bounce back factor after that terrible loss against the Bills, uh, I just don't see it. Uh, Give me the Chargers in that one. Next game, we have a crucial divisional battle, an elimination game of sorts. And give me the Eagles against the Cowboys. I love the way that Jalen Hurts has been playing. Uh, I obviously picked them against the Cardinals last week against the spread, and they almost did it, deserved to do it. So give me the Eagles here big uh, against the Cowboys team, who, let's face it, I mean, they haven't played the best competition the last two weeks. The Bengals and then the Niners, two teams who just have terrible quarterback play at this point. So give me the Eagles. I think Jalen Hurts will light up this Cowboys defense. Next game, we have the Rams and the Seahawks. A great matchup in the NFC West. And give me the Rams here. Uh, I know I picked them last week to win big against the Jets, but Sean McVay saying that he basically got embarrassed and was sick of the Rams' performance just tells you everything you need to know about this one. I know the, I know that Seattle uh, will want to bounce back after... They really got embarrassed, too, when they went to L.A. earlier in the season. But I think Rams defense has a great performance when they did not play well against Sam Darnold. I think they clamped down on Russell Wilson. And I think the Rams, although without Cam Akers, can get back to running the ball. Remember, Jared Goff is great when he doesn't have pressure in his face. It comes down to 
the Rams defensive line, and then the Seahawks defensive line. Who can get more pressure on the quarterback? I think the Rams can get a lot of pressure on Russell Wilson, and I think they win the game. Then to the Sunday night game, Titans at Packers, and I've really flip-flopped on this game. If you've seen all of my prediction videos for the playoffs, I've been predicting that the Titans would win this game, but I'm actually swaying the other way. I think this is a toss-up, but give me the Packers. I mean, Aaron Rodgers... I think he's going to have a great day. I mean, I never I never would acknowledge that the Titans had a great defense. One of the worst defenses in the league, in fact. So I think Aaron Rodgers and that offense faded a little bit last week in the second half. I don't think that will happen this week. I think they'll put up 35-plus points. And I know Tannehill and Derrick Henry looked very impressive against the Lions at home. But that was the Lions' defense. The Packers' defense is a little bit better and they're going to have to play a near-perfect game on offense, which they do have the potential to do so, but I don't think that's going to happen. Give me the Packers narrowly there. And then the final matchup, Monday Night Football, Bills at Patriots. Bills, after clinching the AFC East, this is their chance to put it to the Patriots who have been dominating them for so many years. I think they do that on Monday Night Football. Um, I think this is a chance for the Patriots. Uh, Not many people suspecting them at this point, eliminated from playoff contention. They might have a little fight in them in the first half, but I think the Bills get over the hump. This is a closer game than I think a lot of people think it will be. Uh, When these teams played in Buffalo earlier this year, uh, Cam Newton had the chance to win the game, obviously fumbled in the red zone late. So I think the Bills will win, but very close. Now into our betting locks, and as I already mentioned, we have to have a bounce back week this week, and I think we will get it. Some great locks coming up. In the first game, we have the Niners at the Cardinals. And give me the Cardinals here big. They are minus five points. And I think they'll cover the spread and more. The Niners are 0-3 against the spread the last three weeks. C.J. Beathard, I always thought he was better than Nick Mullins. But he's not a starting quarterback by any means. And the Niners, as I already mentioned, uh, they're just playing for their draft stock at this point. They have the chance to get a top 10 pick. They have every incentive to just look forward to the draft and lose these next two weeks to get that draft potential up. And I think Kyler Murray has a great day against this uh, Niners defense, which is obviously very depleted. We'll be without Jimmy Ward this week. Next game, we have the Dolphins minus three at the Raiders. And this one concerns me a little, uh, knowing that the Dolphins laid an egg when they went out west uh, to play the Broncos earlier this year. But You just got to take this one. The Dolphins are the best against the spread team this season at 10-4. Vegas has highly underrated them, and I just think this spread of three points is too small against the Raiders team, which cannot stop anyone on defense. And I think on Saturday Night Football, this is Tua Tungvaluwa's chance to show the world that he is actually worthy of being a top-five pick. Uh, He will try and lead the Dolphins to the playoffs. And this is quintessential for their playoff chances, as I already mentioned. So I think they get this victory. And three points is almost like a money line bet. So give me that there. Next game, we have the Colts minus one and a half at the Steelers. And I know the Steelers want to bounce back. But you just got to bet on the trends at this point. Colts, this is almost like a money line bet at one and a half. And I just think they win the game against the Steelers team who is in free fall at this point. I mean, I know they're having these players-only meetings, but they are very desperate. They are going to have to pull something out of the hat if they want to win this game. And I'm just going to bet that the Colts keep it going with the trends and win this one against a pretty uh, depleted Steelers team. Next game, we have the Falcons at the Chiefs. And give me the Falcons plus 11. This one is pretty ugly, but considering that the Chiefs are... 0-6 0-6 against the spread, or 0-5-1 against the spread the last six weeks. I think it's only right that you say that the Falcons will make this a one-possession game. This might ha- You might be sweating this one in the fourth quarter, may need a backdoor cover, but the Chiefs won't have to risk it knowing that they already will have the one seed one, basically, uh, at this point. So give me the Falcons to make it close, maybe even upset with Raheem Morris. Uh, I think they're playing great football at this point, and the Chiefs, They have not been putting it to teams like they should at this point. So give me the Falcons plus 11. And then for the final best bet, give me the Rams at the Seahawks. I'm feeling very good about this one. Uh, They're even getting a couple points. But regardless, I think they are going to win the game uh, against the Seahawks team who McVay has Pete Carroll's number in these games. The Rams have 
beat the Seahawks, I think, almost every time in McVay's era, except for one last year on Thursday Night Football, where Greg Zerline ends up missing a kick at the end of the game where the Rams could win it. So I think the Rams play great against the Seahawks, and I think they get to Russell Wilson. As I already mentioned, Jalen Ramsey might have a great day in the secondary, as he did when the, the first time these two teams played. So I think the Rams get it done there and get that best bet done. So comment down below what your best bet and game predictions are. I want to know in the comments, and I will see you in the next one.